Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. If you're looking for a sure thing, if you're the kind of gambler who only wants to bet on winners, then you need to stop this video right now. Right? This video is really higher risk than usual. It's really intended for sophisticated gamblers who are just looking to get compensated for the risk they're taking, who realize that every bet they make could be a losing bet, and for the right price. If the casino gives them the right odds, they'll jump in the water and get wet on a play they think is a losing play. The odds matter. Now let me just say, I'm the kind of guy who will sometimes deliberately bet on long shots if there's value in the play. In other words, if I feel that one of the fighters has a less than 50% chance of winning. Let's say that fighter has a 40% chance of winning. If I'm getting better than a plus 150, the odds needed to compensate me for that risk. In fact, if I'm getting appreciably more than the plus 150 from the casino, I might take that bet. Right? Because if the guy pulls the upset, then I'll be richly rewarded for that risk, right? Just understand, by way of further disclaimer, I'm the kind of guy who right now has some money in Bitcoin, right? I'm looking for outsized rewards. That means I sometimes have to swim against the tide. Now, I believe that Devin Alexander is more talented than Sean Porter. I think he hits harder. I think his uppercuts, both hands, are better than anything Sean Porter throws. Right? I think Alexander is faster than Porter, who is fast. I also think Alexander's more structured. When Alexander moves, there's usually a method to the madness. Not a lot of wasted motion with Devin Alexander. But... I believe the casinos have mispriced this. At the end of the day, it's not the quality of the competition you've fought or even your talent. It's your style. Styles make fights. Timothy Bradley beat Devin Alexander. Right, Timothy Bradley, a little bit shorter knew how to leverage that lack of height by fighting low. He was able to crowd Devin Alexander. You may recall that fight ended with Devin Alexander upset over a headbutt telling the referee that he could not continue. When they went to the scorecards, Alexander lost that fight because he was being beaten up inside. He had a problem with the angles. Bradley's low. Bradley's coming in with short right hands that repeatedly hit Alexander, a southpaw who prefers to have a little bit of distance between him and his opponent. Well, folks, Sean Porter, 5'5 five, five and a half, can fight inside and can mirror Timothy Bradley's fight style. Maybe not as well as Timothy Bradley does, but let's say he can be 80% of Timothy Bradley. The styles match up well for Porter. They also match up well for Alexander because Porter sometimes comes in recklessly with his head sticking out when he comes in low, which would be the perfect time for Alexander to hit him with the kind of uppercut that Alexander used to close the show against Juan Urango, right? Juan Urango had a great chin until, of course, he ran into Devin Alexander uppercuts. It's possible that Sean Porter might not be able to recover from running into a Devin Alexander uppercut. So my point to you is this. This is really a 60-40 fight, right? Porter should be the underdog. 
but he should be a mild underdog, right? We've seen, and Porter's right-handed, we've seen Alexander have problems with right hands. Wasn't he hit with one and put on the ground in the fourth round by Lucas Matisse? Didn't he get hit with several by Timothy Bradley? Right? But what the casinos are doing is they're not giving you a plus 150. They're not on Porter to win. They're giving you a plus 350. Think about that. Bet a dollar to win $3.50 in profit plus the return of your dollar. Right? They're giving you 7 to 2 on Porter to win the fight. You're getting outsized odds here. Now, what if I told you, and again, this video is really for savvy, sophisticated gamblers who can convert percentages to betting odds and who think in terms of the risks, right? What is the percentage of the time that this underdog is going to win? If these guys fought a hundred times, right, how many of the hundred would the long shot win? Right, I'm just here to tell you you're misguided if you think most favorites win a hundred out of a hundred at the championship level against championship level competition. Right, if a guy is a contender, if a guy is unbeaten, if a guy has beaten Julio Diaz, like Sean Porter has, if a guy has sparred, been the primary sparring partner for the Cotto match with Manny Pacquiao, like Sean Porter has sparred with Manny Pacquiao. And keep in mind, a fighter's experience is greater than his official record. It's also who he's been in the ring with sparring. If you realize that Sean Porter is a serious contender, then you realize the three and a half to one odds the casinos are offering you are tasty odds. Let's go one step further, and I'm going to name a specific casino. I can't even bet at this casino because it's outside the country. But I'm using this casino just to show you how ridiculous the odds are on this fight. Right? Now, keep in mind, you're getting far better odds than you should. Let's say Porter has a 40% chance of winning the fight here. You're not getting a plus 150. You're getting a plus 350 on Porter to win. Now, what if I told you that you could also hedge the play by having some on the Alexander side just in case Alexander gets a KO? Would it surprise you to know that right now at Skybet, a big casino in the United Kingdom, at Skybet right now, did you know that the under 10 and a half rounds, that takes you to the midway point of the 11th round, is paying off at 9 to 4? Folks, that's better than 2 to 1. Understand what that means. If Devin Alexander gets the knockout before the midway point of the 11th round, you're not only fully covered, you're getting a better than 100% return. Let's say I have a dollar, right? Let's say I bet 50 cents on Porter to win at three and a half to one odds and 50 cents on the under 10 and a half rounds at two and a quarter to one odds, right? Nine to four. Understand that if either hits I'm making more than a dollar in profit. I'm making more than my 50 cent plus 50 cent initial outlay. Right? Let me go one step further. Let's say Sean Porter gets inside. Let's say Sean Porter starts landing to the body. Let's say Devin Alexander is frustrated and wants a way out, just like in the Timothy Bradley fight. Right? Understand if Sean Porter somehow closes the show, 
within the first ten and a half rounds, you win both sides of the bet. You're getting the plus 350 and the plus 225. So this is purely an odds play. Be aware of the risk. Devin Alexander at the championship level has won many fights by decision. The Lucas Matisse fight. The Marcus Maidana fight. The Randall Bailey fight. Understand too, Sean Porter's last few fights have gone to a decision. So there is a distinct possibility that Devin Alexander wins by decision. But because the casino is giving me 7-2 to two on Porter to win and 9-4 to four on the under 10 and a half rounds of very high over-under, that's the bet I'm recommending. Sean Porter to win at 7-2 to two, hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds. By the way, that's more rounds than a 10 round fight. Right? 10 and a half rounds. Right? This fight's a 12 round fight. Right? So I like Porter to win at 7 to 2, hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds being offered at 9 to 4 currently by Skybet. If you're not getting those odds, you need to look around and find a casino offering you those odds, right? But again, if Alexander wins this by decision, you lose it all, right? Understand, as I said before, I'm the kind of guy who actually invests in Bitcoin, right? If there's no risk, there's no reward. I firmly believe that sometimes when you walk in the casino, you're going to have to make some plays. If you're compensated well enough on underdogs that might not win. This is all a calculated risk. I'm not here trying to look for winners. I'm actually here trying to look for profit. Right? It's two different things. I have no problem in this fight. None whatsoever. If Devin Alexander closes the show before the midway point of the 11th round. I'll just shake my head, I'll laugh, and I'll say, okay, great, I've just made over a 100% rate of return. Right? Obviously, the music's louder and the party's bigger if Sean Porter can pull the upset. Right? All I'm interested in is maximizing the value of my betting dollar. Think it over. Give it a look. Let me know what you think. If you have a strong preference on who wins this fight, and I'll agree, Alexander's the more accomplished fighter, right? If you have a strong preference on who wins this fight, if you have a belief that one fighter is clearly better than the other, if you have betting odds that you feel our community here on YouTube can benefit from, Right? Some betting option, some prop that you feel is even better than what I've proposed here. Please leave it for us in the comment section here to this video. But I'm just here to tell you. The styles match up for Sean Porter in this fight. Right? He's not as talented as the favorite. But the fact that he can bend at the waist, the fact that he can work his way inside, the fact that he's an excellent athlete with stamina who can go to the body. The fact that he did much better in Julio Diaz rematch than he did in the original fight. When he was more on his back foot in the rematch, he's more on his front foot outworking Diaz. The fact that Devin Alexander showed a lack of stamina to some degree against Juan Urango, who was coming back on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage. And the fact that when Devin Alexander has gone the distance lately. Sometimes it's been against slower-footed guys like Lucas Matisse, like Randall Bailey. And the fact that, of course, Sean Porter has foot speed. And the fact that there is a familiarity between these two fighters tells me that this fight shouldn't be a three and a half to one <laughs> fight being offered by the casino. Those odds are too wide. This is 
It's not three and a half to one. So I like Porter to win at three and a half to one, hedged with the under 10.5 rounds at nine to four. I like the odds being offered. I think I'm being compensated for the risk. Just understand, though, that the risk is substantial. If the favorite wins by decision, you lose it all. Thanks for stopping by.